What's up guys, this is uh, Joe from Steel Forge and Fire. I got some uh, new exciting cutting mediums uh, that I want to uh, kind of show to you. Now, I've been looking for new cutting mediums for a little while now. Sparked my interest uh, was Adam Five Words. Uh, I'll leave a link to his uh, YouTube page, great content. And also Augusta Steve. Agora Steve. I don't know where the hell I got Augusta Steve from. Uh, but specifically Adam actually I mean, started up like a challenge to try to find some uh, new cutting mediums to uh, use to uh, practice his uh, practitionership uh, with katana. So he had come out with a couple things uh, that are very interesting. And uh, a couple new things actually came to the market along the way. Augusta Steve actually introduced something to me on Amazon, uh, which I saw it looked like was a great option. <clears throat> um, an option to pool noodles or tatami mats. I mean, there's never an option to tatami mats. Tatami mats are the best thing to cut with on a katana as far as I'm concerned. But if you want to have a different type of cutting medium, something challenging, and pool noodles are very frustrating, as you know, and you want something a little more rigid that's going to kind of stay in place and uh, help you along with uh, aligning your cuts without it moving all over the place. So I've been looking for something that would achieve the size of the tatami mat, the thickness and the rigidness of cutting into a tatami mat, by also, but also having the convenience of having something that's foam like a pool noodle that you don't have to go through the whole process of kind of soaking it overnight and drying it out and rubber banding it up. And you know, it's tatami's kind of annoying to kind of do on a daily basis. So. Uh, I found something pretty cost effective. I mean, kind of along the same prices as per tatami mat. Again, I credit Augusta Steve that uh, I'll leave a link to his YouTube page as well. Great content, check him out, sub him up as well. Credit to Steve for introducing this to me. And uh, I went on Amazon and I ordered it up. So I have these foam items. They're actually, uh, they're act the actual make of the item is can do or can do, C-A-N-D-O, can do. They're actually made as an exercise mat. Um, exercise my cutting practice, that's what it's gonna exercise. It's actually made as an exercise mat and uh, it's a very rigid foam. It can't bend, very hard to bend, very rigid, okay? Uh, the actual length of this thing is about uh, 36 inches from top to bottom. Uh, the actual width, I think it, it actually is about six inches is the actual width of, of the foam. And it's it's really, I mean, if you can just see, it's, it's a very rigid, tough foam, okay? Very solid. I actually picked up two of these things. You can see how solid they are. Okay, they don't bend. Okay, they don't droop. And they're pretty much like the length of a tatami mat. It's exactly 36 inches for like most uh, most tatami mats. Um, I think it's actually going to be a really good target to kind of practice with. It's, I don't think it's going to be that hard, that easy to get through. It really is. A, I, I, it's hard for me to describe to you, but it's a very thick foam. So you're really going to have great, have to have great edge alignment, a lot of force through the cuts, and I think it's going to be really, really good target. Okay, to practice with. This particular can do Amazon foam exercise mat product. Um, it comes out at about, it's about 10 bucks each, pretty reasonable. Uh, picked up two for about 20 bucks. So I think it's definitely something that um, I'm very excited about trying out. Raining today, I'm gonna try to cut out, cut this week. I'm gonna have a cutting session this weekend. I'm gonna try these things out. But the good thing about this is you can actually, it's actually foam on the bottom and you could probably spike right through here, maybe if you get like a little pocket knife, make a little hole, and you could probably use the wood spike from the uh, your tatami stand if that's what you have, and kind of put it right through, and it'll stay nice and rigid in here, and it should be able to stand up on the tatami mat, you know, pretty much like this length here. So it's a perfect height, and a perfect rigidness to cut, and I'm really, really excited to kind of try these things out. I think it's gonna be a great cutting medium. So this is a new type of cutting medium, uh, that I'm gonna try out, I'm gonna test out, I'm gonna try it out with some katana, and I'm gonna try it out with uh, some a new offering, something new I wanna to introduce to you guys, is my uh, cold steel machetes. This is the uh, Chinese war sword, and this is the uh, a Thai 
Machete from Cold Steel. This is the Chinese War Sword uh, from Cold Steel, okay? It comes in a little sheet. Uh, that's made, well the actual sword is made supposedly in South Africa, that's the way it's stamped. And the sheet is made uh, somewhere else. But the sheet is not anything to kind of brag about. It kind of keeps it secure, it keeps it in place. But it's kind of annoying to actually take it apart. Because uh, you got to take these, there's buttons here, button here on the handle obviously, and there's two buttons here. So you got to kind of keep it on a flat surface to kind of unbuckle these first, which is one here. And one here okay it still stays secure because it's actually buckled on the handle but you got to kind of actually hold it from the bottom because you'll cut your fingers and kind of just slip it out just like that and this is kind of just turns into like a wet noodle after it's not rigid at all so this is the Chinese war sword okay it is definitely you know a very big beast of a blade Okay, it's got a nice handle to it. Okay, it's got that, uh, the actual handle is like a polyproline, polyproline handle, that's what they call it, basically like a plastic uh, polyurethane type of handle. It's got the little ring here, you know, noteworthy of a Chinese sword. Now, I've always wanted kind of like a Chinese, uh, Chinese war sword. Um, so this is actually a really nice thing that, you know, Cold Steel is offering to give you somewhat of a Chinese sword. So now the history of this this particular sword, it's actually, it's called a Chinese war sword because it actually it was catered after an actual original reproduction of uh, a sword, a Chinese sword called a Dao sword or the Dao sword, D-A-O, Dao sword. And it's also known as a Chinese great sword. So it's based on a uh, uh, something from the Ming dynasty that originated between like 1368 and 1644. So the Deo has a much larger handle like this one here, and it was actually used on horseback, similar to like the originations to the Japanese katana, like a Unokubi Zakuri. So this actually originated um, many of the Chinese swords that came there after it. So uh, it's actually a pretty significant in terms of the importance of this type of design in a Chinese war sword. I mean, it, as far as the length of it, the actual handle on the on this particular model it comes in at around 14 inches and the blade is 24 inches so at 14 inches you definitely got a lot of real estate to kind of hold this what I don't like is basically this part right here okay if you're getting into the swing of it swinging of it uh, this kind of bites into your hand a little bit so you may want to keep your hand a little bit here and separate it up to right right around here so the fact that you can't really hold it to the bottom it makes it a little uncomfortable, I mean, especially if you're doing some hard swings. I mean, I guess if you had like gloves on or something like that, it would be a little easier to hold. But definitely, uh, the ring is part of the historical design of the sword, but I think obviously it could be done better. But uh, guys, listen, it's, it's basically, it's, a, um, it's like a $40 sword. It's, uh, it, it's $40 and I think the Thai sword is in the $30 range. So it's not very expensive. So basically for what they're giving you, it's really not a bad deal. And it's a really, you know, solid piece. It's one, it's, it's one sheet metal, okay, from the tip all the way to the handle and they just covered it up. So basically the tang goes all the way to this ring here, all the way, you know, from the, the tip all the way down to the ring. That's part of the tang and they kind of just, you know, gripped it up with this uh, plasticky type of material, which is, you know, it's pretty grippy. It's actually, your, your hands don't slip. It definitely stays in place. So if you do hold it before the ring and kind of try to control your swing, you can kind of keep it in without your hand kind of hitting into the ring a little bit. The only drawback of this handle is this ring here, which there's not that problem with the tie sword. So you got like a little guard over here. You know, it's a nice looking sword. The only problem with this particular sword that I found, it says that it's sharpened but it's not it didn't really come sharp enough as far as i'm concerned so i did go in and put uh i put this on a buck grinder i put like a 19 angle acute angle uh edge on here and then i, I after i did that i also uh went to a stro uh, a stropping belt like a leather stropping belt and i guys this thing is crazy sharp it really takes a nice edge like i said it's a 1055 high carbon steel and it's got the black coating here so it's gonna it's anti-rust uh, but it's got, I mean, if you could just see it here, it's really got a great edge 
on it that you can really put a nice fine edge on and that's pretty much what I did. Uh, I did some testing on it with some paper and some pool noodles and it really cuts very very well. So you could expect if you get this sword, okay, that you definitely want to put your own edge on here because it's definitely not sharp enough uh, to do the type of cutting uh, that we all like to do through bottles and tatami and these, uh, you know, crazy hiss, you know, thick foam things here. You're definitely going to need a nice, <clears throat> nice, uh, a, more of an acute angle, a sharper edge to get through them here. So that's the uh, Chinese war sword. So next one I have here is actually a Thai sword. Now the Thai sword also has some significant historical background. The Thai sword is actually called a uh, Burmese or a DHA or Burmese sword. Um, there's a couple different names for it. It's actually called a Darab. So it's from Thai language and it's uh, again this is a, a sword that originated uh, in Thailand and shaped away from many Thai swords right after. Uh, again it comes also in uh, the same type of sheet. It's also made in South Africa. All the swords are pretty much the same specs. Other than the length and the, and the, and the weight, they're all pretty much the same specs. They all have the 1055 um, high carbon steel. This one is, is a 22 inch blade and it's a little bit of a shorter handle. It's like, uh, it's actually a longer handle. It's about 14 and a half inch handle. So with this one, it, it comes off a little bit easier because this one, you just have the one clip right here and you kind of bend this back a little bit and it kind of just comes out. So this comes out a little bit easier than the Chinese war sword. So again, this is also a really, really nice piece, okay? It doesn't have the thickness of the Chinese war sword, but it definitely has a very wide blade compared to maybe if you're accustomed to a katana, it's definitely a lot wider. It's machete, it's a machete-like type of sword. That's really what the uh, the purpose of it is. Now this this handle is a lot easier to grip, okay? Because you have kind of a pommel here, and again, same thing, full tang all the way down, and they just covered it up. This is a little bit more of a smooth plastic type of handle. So you have the uh, the pommel here that you can definitely rest your hand right here very comfortably and be able to spread the hands apart, and you have a really nice um, grip to it, okay? where you can definitely get some really nice cuts, okay? Very light in the hand as well. It's extremely, extremely light in the hand, okay? The uh, Thai sword is actually about two pounds, five ounces. The Chinese war sword I didn't mention is actually about 3.5 ounces, so it's definitely considerably uh, heavier, okay? But these are really, really nice swords. Uh, nice machete style swords uh, from Cold Steel. Gives you a little bit of a, uh, a feel of having a Thai sword and a feel of having a Chinese type of sword uh, for a very little price. And I think if they do what I think they're gonna do, and I've seen all the videos, uh, and you put a great cutting edge on it, I think it should be a definitely a great backyard cutter. Something you could definitely have fun with. I definitely am looking forward to cu cutting with it with this new medium cutting some bottles with it and see what happens. It's also the anti-rust of the uh, the black anti-rust of it is great. If you're looking to cut uh, water bottles with it and stuff like that, you don't have to worry about rusting. You just wipe it down and you're good to go. Uh, but this is, again, it's a little heavier. This is a little sleeker in the hands. Okay, so if you hold this in the hand, it's still very balanced and it's very light, okay, in the hands. You can definitely get some nice cuts with it, very controlled. The blade is very controlled, okay, it's just that the tie sword is a little bit lighter, but this is really a really a nice, really a really, it's really a nice blade, okay, that you can to get through some good targets with. Now it's actually a spring steel, okay, so if you notice, kind of has a little bounce and you can actually take it, you can put a little bend on it, you know, it's not that bendy, but it's definitely bendy. Okay, it's more of a 1055, it's like a spring steel, so it's gonna, it probably won't crack on, uh, on some bad cuts, so it's actually, that's why it's even better for being a backyard cutter. So if you're looking to cut heavy water bottles and doing some trick cuts, I think this is a great alternative to a katana because, you know, you don't want to mess up your katana, especially if you're looking to do, um, you know, to keep it, you know, in its pristine condition from when you get it, this is definitely a good alternative to, to doing some you know, backyard shenanigans.
Beast machetes from Cold Steel. I'm going to be cut, cutting with them. I'm going to try the new cutting medium. I'm going to try some water bottles, hopefully this upcoming weekend, and get, that, get you that video pretty soon. So you have your Chinese war sword from Cold Steel, and you have your Thai machete. Very nice pieces from Cold Steel. Their home machete line is pretty damn good. Very affordable alternatives uh, to katana to use for cutting. And again, you have your can do, can do. Okay, new cutting medium from Amazon. I'm gonna leave a link to, this, uh, to, these, uh, to these pieces on Amazon if you wanna pick them up and take a look at them. Guys, and I know I didn't mention before, I usually do in the beginning of my video, guys. Hashtag 22 a day. 22 veterans uh, take their lives every day. It's definitely a very frightening statistic and we need to grow awareness of that. Uh, veterans, we're here for you, we love you, and we appreciate all that you do and there's, there's help for you if you need it. And uh, obviously I always thank all of our active men and women in our military. We appreciate all your service and all the sacrifices you do for this country. God bless you all guys and gals. And uh, to everyone else guys, thanks for watching. This is Joe Steel Forge and Fire. Hope this video was of, was of some help. I'm gonna get you some cutting videos as soon as I can, as soon as it stops raining in New York. I feel, it been, I feel like it's been raining for about five days. But thanks for watching, guys, and you guys have has a fantastic day. Peace out.